So I'm proud to be a presenter today at the New Jersey Employment Conference, and I'm here to really share some of the lessons learned from Kessler Foundation's white paper we had in the 2017 National Employment and Disability Survey Supervisor Perspective. So one of the things that we share today is that it's really important for supervisors, when they go to hire people with disabilities, they're mirroring what they see through senior management. So if the supervisor wants to hire somebody with a disability, that's great, but it will be a one-off. Unless that person is getting information from above, unless they're getting a directive that yes, this is gonna be a corporate initiative through either a senior management person or senior management who's a champion, that initiative is not gonna happen in a corporation. So that's one of the key findings from our survey. When we look at our white paper, what we found is that to support somebody at work, they really need those wraparound services. To keep and hold a job, even to be promoted for a job, it's a little more than just um, you know, getting the job. They really need a provider agency to help them or someone in the community, whether they're family or friends or system perhaps with transportation, perhaps with budgeting, maybe it's the first time they've earned money, to really get those other things that support a person in a job. To, keep and hold that job. So in a business, typically there's going to be a champion. It's either, it could be a parent of a child with a disability, it could be a brother or sister, it could be coming from an employee resource group, but there's usually somebody who really wants to see people with disability get hired to the company. And how they do that uh, is very different. It depends on the size of the company. It's a family business that just might go directly to an owner. If it's a very large corporation, they might have to work through an HR department. If they themselves are a supervisor or a manager, they may be able to just go and hire somebody on their own, whoever fits the job. So people with disabilities are typically employed at about, I think, 20% where we usually see employment for people with disabilities. So right now in the economy, between 70 and 80%. Um, what really happens is that people with disabilities are underemployed or unemployed, but a lot of it has to do with fear. There's fear of employment, fear of capability. Um, a lot of families hold their loved ones back. They really don't want to let them go out and try new things, which means they're going to be independent move away from home, they have to learn new skills, there's that fear of losing sometimes their health benefits, but there are plenty of ways through internships, volunteer opportunities, working up to the limits before you have to just benefits that give individuals work experience that they can go out and eventually probably look for full-time employment. Employment's really important. When you go to a party or you meet somebody, the first thing they ask you after who you are is what do you do? And people with disabilities or even people who are unemployed don't have anything to say. A, a child with a disability isn't asked typically as they're growing up, what do you want to do when you grow up? And it's such a part of our life and identity to be independent, to be able to be self-sufficient. That's what we all want to be. We don't want to depend on everybody else. We want to be independent. We want to develop our own skills, our own networks. Most people see the role model moving away from home. Um, I mean, that's really the goal, to own your own property, own your own car. How does that happen? That happens with a job. And that's really why it's so important for people to gain that independence, get work experience, especially when you're young, and are able to work when you get older. And hopefully with the intent of fully supporting yourself, or at least supplement if yourself if you're on public benefits. You're always better off in the long term working. Well, I hope employers walk away from this conference with the idea that if they haven't already worked uh, with people with disabilities or their company hasn't started an initiative that they do start one and they can see the capabilities and how much people with disabilities can lend to their workforce. A diverse workforce always, you're always better getting different ideas. There's always things that you can learn from other people, especially if they have disabilities and have learned to do things a little bit differently in their life. For the providers who are here and the families, um, I hope individuals realize that no matter what your disability, there is a way to work. Um, it's the right job for the right person in the right setting. I think the number one thing for individuals to know is you're dealing with an individual. Everybody is different, everybody has different interests, everybody has different skill levels, everybody has different abilities. And there really isn't a judgment or bias on somebody with a disability, just like you wouldn't judge or want your, uh, anybody to be judged. Everybody has different talents and experiences, and that is the way people get hired and find jobs, through their talents and experiences and what they can do.